Hi, we're looking at the stock plan main board. This segment I'm going to run through how you work through drought pack. In this series, we're going to look at two programs out of stock plan. We're going to look at the drought pack one, which enables you to work out how much you might be feeding in a dry period and what it's going to cost you. Two critical pieces of information you need to know at the start of your planning process. And secondly, as a separate one, we'll look at impact, which enables you to do destocking and gives you an indication of the, your financial position during the drought and years after the drought. Again, important information in planning. So let's start off with drought pack. We just click on it. This screen pops up. Because you're starting it for the first time, you're just going to open a new scenario. Once you've used it a while and you've got existing files in there, you'll just click on this one to open up a file you've already created and saved. Now, Drought Pack was developed back in the late 90s, but that doesn't mean it's not relevant now. It's the information you put in that drives the, the results. So it's irrelevant when it was developed. We don't worry about this side anymore. On this screen, all you have to do is decide how do you want to set up the templates? Do you want to do it for cattle only, sheep only, or sheep and cattle? Personally, if properties run cattle and sheep, I tend to do one at a time because then you get clear information about what's the quantity and cost for feeding the cattle, what's the quantity and cost of feeding the sheep. So I'm just going to click on the sheep only button. With this program, you hit OK to leave anything, and that's what saves. This is what's called the input tab. So if you look across the top, file, it's the sort of thing you'll you'll normally expect when you hit file. You can print, you can save. This is the input tab. The feed summary is one we're going to look at. Once we fill this in, we'll go to the feed summary. We're not really worrying about the cash flow anymore in the graphs, and we'll look at the break even. So. It's this, it's the food summary, it's the break even. There are help file attached. So I've done farm details, starting month and duration. You've got to specify what you think your feeding period might be. Now this is this is always a difficult thing for people to, to think through, but you've got to make a decision. So I'm just going to do an example which might be typical um, in Tasmania, if things turn bad, it's because of a failed spring, so we might start in November and we think we might have to feed for six months. You, you decide. Again, hit OK. We've now got sheep numbers. Now, if I'd clicked on cattle, you can see there's a space there. You just would have had the tab which says cattle numbers and you would have had a tab down here which says cattle nutrition. So all, all I've done by clicking sheep only is the two cattle ones of disappeared. Because I said the planning period was starting in November for six months, that just gives us the template of that size. If I started in a different month, it would be labelled differently. And if I said nine months, there'd be nine columns across. Now I'm just going to say in November, um, let's say it, it's been tough, so you've weaned early, you've just got a, a thousand dry years. There are these little arrows off to the left here. If I just hit the single arrow, just moves the input one one cell. I hit the double arrow, it puts it all, all the way across. That's just a speed up data entry. And we might say that of those lambs are wound and there's 800 of those. Again, just an example of, of how you put things in again, hit OK. We don't worry about the livestock costs and income. When we first developed this, um, people's financial records were pretty poor. So to get a, a cash flow or something like that, it had to be done in this program. As time moves on and, and people having to submit BAS statements every quarter, people's financial packages have improved. And what producers are basically saying now, it's easier for them to run this program to get the data out of food summary and go and put that in their own uh, financial package than the other way. So we're not going to even look at that. We'll drop it out. Feeds available. This is where you fill in what foods do you have on hand or what foods are you thinking of 
of um, buying. So you can just type it in. I'm just going to say I've got some barley. Dry matter, 89%. Energy of 12 and a half megs, and it's it's cost me land at $450 a tonne. You can set up a whole list of foods in here, and whether you use them or not, it doesn't matter. It's the next screen we decide how we use it. The other thing I'll often do is I might put barley in again, but this time I'm going to call it barley one. It's going to have the same energy and dry matter, but I'm going to put a higher price in. So I might have started off in the period having buying barley and I might have been able to buy it 450, but by the time I get to February buying barley, the price might have gone up. So that just gives me the opportunity to just use the same product, but use it at a different price. You know, I could put, uh, I could put pellets in. Yeah, I'm just making figures up. There might be something that um, um, a, a protein there, lupins might and be often in Tassie, but there might be another one there say, oh, geez, um, lupins, but I don't know any data about it. This little button down the bottom, view food calculator, if you click on this, this other stream develops. Now, originally this was enabled for people to do fancy mixes. Quite frankly, in droughts, we don't do fancy mixes and we can mix two products in the next screen anyhow. But what you can use this for is to find out some information about the product if you don't know. Um, so if I go down here, I click on grains, lupins, I can pick up lupins. If I put a, a price in, straight away you'll see it's telling you it's got a dry matter of of 90, 90% energy of 13 and a half and protein of 20. Of course, I've put a price in there and um, I'll, if I put 100% in there for 100% of the mix, you'll now notice that over here on the left-hand side, all that loop and details appeared. Once that appears like that, so the heading is there and it's all there, another little button has appeared down here called copy to table. So if I just click on that, that loop and information's now moved from the right-hand side over to the left-hand side. And it's got to be over here in this table for us to use. So this this table over here is handy if you've got no idea of, of the, the energy content. Now, one thing you would have noticed over here, it talks about the protein content of lupins. This model drought pack is just running on energy because it's a drought program. To keep animals alive in a drought, energy is what critical. Uh, protein is critical when we're growing stock. So those young lambs which we've got to grow, protein's um, an important pack factor, but it's principally an energy-driven program. So now I'm happy, I'll just want to hit this hide the food calculator button. That gets rid of that, and I'm happy to move on. This... Um, uh, radio, it's told me that the cost of I actually started putting lupins in there and I never finished the equation. That was the problem. If I'd fill this in properly, uh, that wouldn't have happened. Did okay. Now we're getting down to the one part of the program that actually does some calculations. All the programs done so far is take inputs from us. So because in the sheep number, I said I had dry ewes and wound lambs, that's all I had on the place. They're the only two columns that are available. If I had something else, these that gray out area would just look be looking like this column. So what's the weight of the ewe? Um, I'm gonna say it's 55 kilos. And I'm using the tab key. As I move this down, I'm using the tab key on the computer. It's the best way to do it. The next one is gain grams per day. What do you want the animals to do? I want to just maintain these animals, so I put zero in. I don't want them to lose weight. I don't want them to gain weight. Percent supplement. What it's saying is how much of the animal's diet is coming from this supplement. I've got these animals 
you know, food containment area, so it's 100%. And I would always recommend that you do it at 100%. Now we get down to food number one. If I click on that, all the things I put in the previous screen becomes available. So in this, I'm going to say I'm going to use barley, and I'm just going to use 100% of barley. Now, notice this is just for the month of November. So what's that saying? You're going to have to feed 670 grams of barley, and at the price I put it in, it's going to cost you 30 cents a day. If we go over to the wound lambs, we wound them early. They might only be 20 kilos. Young animals like that, we've got to feed them for growth. I'd like 60 grams a day. Again, it's all coming from the supplement. In this case, I'll use some barley, but it'll be 80% uh, barley and 20% lupins. Why have I put the, the lupins in? Because I've got young animals, I'll, I'll need more protein in the system. So I've just done a mix. So again, I'm going to have to, feed, have to feed 440 grams of that mix, and the cost is going to be 21 cents per day. Now, if nothing's going to change for the next month, and in this case, I just want to maintain, for the six months, I just want to maintain the dry use as I've had them there. They're 55 kilos now. I want them to be 55 kilos at the end. And I just want to keep growing these lambs. So I can just hit this button, copy to next month, and everything I've entered in terms of product of using moves over. You'll notice for in, we're now in December. It started December, the wound lambs at 22 kilos because the programs worked out they did some growth in November. Click again, they're now 24. Click again for February. And here I might say, well, um, I've run out of my barley one, out of my first lot of barley. I now want to use my second lot, which is just at a higher price. I can bring now, it's the barley one, which is at a cost of $500 a tonne. The, the quantity I'm feeding hasn't changed, but the cost has gone up. And same over here, it's all the $450 barley's gone. So again, the cost has gone up. But also the amount we're feeding this group is going up because they're, now they're heavier. So if we just keep clicking, we get to the end of the period our dry years are still 55 kilos. Our wound lambs, we've now moved them up to 60 kilos. Hit OK. That was sheep nutrition. Financial information, it's not quite as critical to fill in as it used to be because this used to set up, um, was more important when we were doing the cash flows here. But this top cell, I think, absolutely critical. You do not feed stock during a drought at no cost there is and this is not i'm not talking about labor costs i'm talking about depreciation on equipment or repairs and maintenance on equipment i often use 30 dollars a ton and i'll just put some interest rates in here because um they'll be useful when we do look at some break evens later on so i've just put some information right up the top hit okay And now you've got that far, hit the Save Farm Information button. It'll come up. Call it what you want. I'm having a bit of trouble seeing it, but save the information. Now we want to go to the food summary. We now want to get an output, and this is to some degree the whole reason we're just using the program. It's telling us the number of stock we've got each month. It's telling us what the monthly cost is. So nearly 15,000 up to nearly 18,000, and it's totaling it, we'll call it 99,000. And it's giving us the monthly quantity of grain we are going through. So you've got monthly totals, you've got totals. So there was going to be 87 tonne of the first lot of barley, 90 tonne of the second lot, we go through 14 tonne of lupins for that feeding regime. The critical thing down here is you, you can print it. And if you want to test a number of different grains, uh, you might be looking at buying three different products at three different prices. Set it up, do the first one, get the result, hit the print button. 
go back into your sheep nutrition, use a different product, go all the way through, hit OK. That information will end up going to the food summary. So you'll get a different output because you've changed some of the products you've used. Hit the print button so you can go over and over again. Each time you hit the print button, write on the sheet of paper the results because of using product X. The next one is the results because I use product Y. The next one's because I use product Z. And then you've got three or four runs on bits of paper with different numbers and you can decide which of those you're going to use. Basically, what you're seeing there in the feed summary is the key part of drought pack. That's why we use it. That's why we run it. Another little feature is this break even price. If I click on that, we've only got two groups of animals. If I click on dry use, what are the values of your dry use at the 1st of November? You know, I'm still thinking of what prices were like in Tassie in spring. Um, $35. I could have got $35 for them on the 1st of November. If I'd sold them, I would have got some interest. It's cost $60 to feed those animals. The interest on the, the feeding bill, they could, in fact, you might have spent $4 a head on them. What this is saying is, they were $35 at the start. You've spent all that money on them. So if you could, if you expect you could buy a replacement use for less than $102 or $103 at the end, it's saying you would be better off selling at the start than going through the feeding process. The one thing in this example would be is these ewes might have started off dry. By the time we got to the end of, end of the feeding program, you would have joined them. So you've got to think about that. Just the other thing to bear in mind that they might have grown $30 worth of wool. Let's, let's say $25 worth of wool because we'll allow for costs of getting it off. So that was some, some um, potential income you've got. If you take that into account, you'd have to be able to buy the replacement animals for about 77 bucks for it to be uh, a worthwhile decision. You know, if the, if the value of these animals at the front is $125, this number down here changes, right? So it's just a thing to let you quickly weigh up I've got an animal, I've got costs of feeding them. How does that, how do those things stack up with a likely price I might have, to, might or might not have to pay at the end? You can just do exactly the same with the wound lambs. You know, you might have say, you might have said there was no value on them at the start. Um, again, you might have spent some money on them. Uh, if you're going to go through that, you would have you'd have to be confident you could get rid of them for more than 54 bucks at the end for that process to be worthwhile. If you if you think it through, and I don't think those animals are going to be worth anything. Well, you know, it's just helping give you a snapshot decision. So that's drought pack. The key thing you're doing is getting this food summary. That's what you want. You want to have that information readily available because we might use it later on. Thank you very much. Good luck.